Greetings, everyone, and welcome to this episode of the Hired Geek Podcast, episode number 125 with Sung Ri, CEO of Optimal, a platform that helps students make more informed college decisions. So uh, really, really great hearing the story of how Optimal came to be and uh, how they are working to help students uh, understand more about uh, earnings outcomes and uh, things of the like and student reviews. But uh the best part of this episode by far was uh, just having a brief portion of it talking about uh, kind of working to dismantle uh, sort of the mystique of uh, institutional prestige, you know, the Ivies out there and other name brand institutions that uh, people just assume are by default better, uh, but really trying to uh, be informed by the actual data uh, and understand, you know, what better options might be out there for students and certainly, you know, inclusive of shorter credentials and boot camps that are out there as well. So we spend a little bit of time uh, talking about that. Uh, as well. So uh, really great conversation. It's a shorter one, but uh, really appreciate Sung's time and appreciate you for listening to this episode number 125 with Sung Ri. We are here uh, to talk through uh, something that we've been covering uh, quite a bit on the podcast, but always deserves further conversation and all the ways that folks are trying to address uh, kind of the affordability and uh, college choice uh, kind of dilemmas that a lot of students are facing uh, to make sure they choose the right program at the right university and uh, get a good uh, return on that investment of their time and money. So uh, we will uh, start out as we always do, Sung, if you want to introduce yourself and give a brief overview of your professional journey and how you get to be where you are today. Thanks for having me. I started my career uh, after college uh, at Microsoft being a software engineer, and I eventually I eventually gravitated towards management, uh, developing uh, different types of uh, consumer-focused software. And uh, I always had an inkling to start something new, uh, do something different. So um, I ended up uh, venturing out after about 10 years at Microsoft. I started a company um, that was a venture-backed company in wireless software startup. I And I sold that after three years. And then just right about then, uh, you know, I really wanted to get an understanding of how, basically how money is made on the internet. And so... You know, uh, you know, back then it was all about PCs and networks and traditional, uh, you know, software that was kind of the big rage. But, uh, you, you know, the, the Internet was really um, coming into uh, into focus at that time. Uh, this is like back in 2000. So I ventured out, started a company and, you know, I started build, just building websites and trying to figure out like how people how people make money on the Internet. And I I started doing affiliate marketing. It was because just that was really the easiest way to do, uh, you know, start uh, build websites and try to figure out how to monetize your traffic. And eventually, we kind of grew that, and you know, I, I did that in various different industries, but just eventually started focusing on one uh, one uh, segment, one um, industry, and that's education. And uh, and I didn't really think much of it, you know. Uh, we were doing mostly generating leads for for-profit institutions and it was great and uh, you know we're generating a lot of a uh, lot of leads like making a lot of money but then we realized like wow this is like a little bit messed up uh, you know there are a lot of problems uh, there's a lot of misinformation a lot of uh, uh, just false advertising false promises being made to students and the students were kind of uh, being asked to take on a huge uh, loan uh, and a debt to uh, fund their education without a promise of any kind of su substantial return, so we were like, "Wow, okay, this, this is this is uh, this is a problem. We can't continue to just, just do this." And so we started gravitating towards building websites and publishing information that are useful for students, as opposed to just kind of doing affiliate marketing, uh, catering towards these uh, schools. And so we launched a you know what is one of the largest uh, review platform for these types of for-profit institutions and uh, vocational school. Uh, it's called uh, Grad Reports. And, uh, and we started publishing a lot more information about, uh, you know, just, just about schools and just helping people make uh, better choices. Um, and, and, and it became pretty clear to us that there is just a lot, lot of, you know, lack of transparency about how much schools cost, a lot of misinformation. Um, out there, um, as well as there's uh, there's a lot of uh, inertia around how people pick, pick uh, choose colleges. Uh, you know, focus on reputation and passion and some of the other factors that uh, 
basically uh, we're starting to see a divergence in terms of you know what kind of investment students are having to make to get a college degree and what kind of returns they're getting and you know in terms of like what they're able to make uh and, you know in terms of salary career and uh, finding the right career path and so forth and you know the recent study from UW uh University of Washington is showing that around 53% of recent grads are uh, either unemployed or underemployed. Um, and so I think, you know, that's a pretty big number in terms of people who's been trained and, uh, you know, spent four years or plus in college education, not being in a career that is, um, you know, what they were, what they were trained to, you know, to focus on or the, the intended uh, areas of uh, study. And so, you know, what we set out to do is, you know, really kind of focus on that information, providing much greater um, insights to how how students, uh, you know, what the student outcome is once they graduate, uh, and how much they should be expected to pay for schools, um, and just really a lot of information that is in in some places, kind of not necessarily in other places, but really hard to get to. And, and so we, you know, we try to aggregate all of that information um, and provide it to students so they can make uh, informed choices without like spending, you know, too much of their energy doing these types of research. Right. Yeah. And that's great. I mean, yeah, just, you know, uh, I've kind of said it through a lot of these conversations, like just giving students more information, more options, and like they feel as though they're, uh, making the best informed choice versus like what you said. And we'll we'll talk a little bit more about that later, but like making choices based on just like, you know, prestige reputation, like just, you know, uh, what are the household names or what is just like, Oh, this is a school close to me or something. Like I'll just go there versus like, well, you could go somewhere else. They have a different, uh, program or focus, you know, modality that you could, uh, uh, take advantage of and those sort of things. But, um, and I guess just to clarify, because I know like you're sort of like aggregating this information that could be in disparate places. And certainly, you know, there's a lot of uh, sometimes like limits on what a college is going to choose to, you know, share about themselves on their own website. But because um, are students able to like, uh, like, do they submit information or their experiences or their reviews on uh, your platform? Because just talking through, I think the next question I wanted to get to is just talking a little bit more about, you know, what uh, your platform optimal does and uh, sort of like what the experience is that, you know, somebody going there. Yeah, sure. Um, a bulk of our, our information does come from other uh, data sources because there's just a lot more information out there, a lot more accurate uh, information about, you know, what kind of salaries they, uh, that students make, uh, what, what, uh, how much debt they incur and things like that. And that information is out there. It's just kind of hard to access. Uh, but we, what we do is we, we do provide a lot of qualitative information in, in, in our, in our, on our platform. We allow people to submit reviews of their colleges, their college experience. And, you know, it's, it's, it's anecdotal, obviously, but it's pretty powerful, right? Like I remember a long time ago, um, we, you know, when we first started, um, you know, this person uh was just completely distraught. She, uh, this, I think it was a he. He wrote this long review about a college, about a for-profit institution, and um, and and he he was, you know, he basically had spent like two years or whatnot, spent so you know tens of thousands of dollars, and he was basically out of luck because of some technicality and this, uh, you know, this for uh, this institution. Um, wouldn't let him graduate, wouldn't let him complete. And so, it's, you know, basically you're stuck in this, like the worst situation where not only do you not have a degree and not, not have the credential, but uh, you're you know heavily in debt. And, um, and they were just completely distraught and they wrote this like long, um, you know, like a, a pages worth of like their experience, personal experience on our review platform. And I just remember thinking, I mean, I, you know, that really stuck with me. It's like, wow, you know, people need to be able to see this type of, you know, what, what, what other students are experiencing, what problems they're, they're facing, you know, and what, what are the types of things that they need to avoid to be able to make smarter decisions. And so, yeah, I mean, you get a lot of, there's, there's data, right. And you get a lot of data out there, but, you know, our, our, our platform, we have this type of 
really in-depth qualitative personal experiences that, that could really also affect how people think about their decision-making process and how they go about um, uh, choosing colleges. And really, this question is kind of just at the, the core of everything. So kind of just take it as you will. But, you know, uh, you know, yeah, you have this quantitative pieces, you know, uh, earnings and debt and different things like that, uh, as well as those anecdotal pieces kind of qualitatively from uh, students themselves. But, you know, say a prospective student, you know, walks up to you and with everything that you know, and the work that you do and everything, you know, how do you think students right now should be making decisions about their, you know, higher education broadly, you know, whatever uh, form that might take? Like, w what are the pieces that they should be looking for to help inform their decisions? You know, obviously, um, a lot of it is, you know, very personal. Uh, and, and again, you know, for, for, Traditional students, we're talking about, you know, 18 year olds making decisions about sort of what's going to happen with the rest of their rest of their lives and having to make that decision at that at that uh, point in time in, in their lives. Um, you know, I mean, I, I certainly had no idea what what the hell I wanted to do with my life when, when I was 18. So it's a uh, it's 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 a daunting, um, you know, daunting task and a daunting challenge. What I would, the, the advice that I would give is to uh, seek out, uh, just be more knowledgeable, right? And so, you know, for example, you know, some people might gravitate towards the name recognition and, and brand of the school. Some people might re gravitate towards where they're located, the school size, things like that. There's, you know, people just all have different preferences. I, I, what I would say is, I would say, get more information. Figure out what are what are what major you want to you know what what you want to study what you think you may want to study down the road, and see how students fare, uh, you know what their outcome is, what kind of jobs do they get, how much do they make out of that, um, and uh, and just be more informed. You know, it's I mean it's obviously it's going to be sort of, you know, the decision making process is going to be part passion and part rational kind of practical decision making. I mean, that's, that's just, you know, how, how human beings make decisions all the time all for everything all anyway. But I would say just, you know, there is more information out there, go seek it out. You know, I mean, it's a, it's a four plus year, you know, hundred thousand plus dollars worth of investment that you're making, you know, to spend more time on understanding what the outcome is going to be. Um, than you normally you, you would have done otherwise. One of the biggest comments that I, I hear from people looking at our website grad report uh, grad reports, because what we did was we did we published rankings based on major and um, uh, and and salary outcome for each uh, base for each college, and um, the 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 biggest comment that I hear is like wow if I had this information back when I was making this decision, I would have made a different choice, right? So, so my advice is, yeah, just get more information, you know, learn more because, uh, you know, it, it will influence, you know, your thought process differently, the more, you know. Right. And it, it can even be that it just makes you feel better about the choice you were going to make anyway. <laughs> like that could be an outcome, but I'm uh... absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Um, cause I think too, like what you're saying is that like, there's a lot that goes into it. Cause if it was just a pure, if everyone was just the rational being and just making a pure cost benefit analysis, then everybody would like major in petroleum engineering or something. It's like, <laughs> Oh, like, well, you get the most money if you uh, are a petroleum engineer. So like everybody right. should just do that. Right. And it's like, well, no, like not everybody's interested in it or maybe it's not something that they're uh, good at. Cause that, that's what I think too, is like on that emotional passion side, it's like, what are you good at? What are you interested in? And then the other part is like, okay, yeah. Choose like the, you know, the most affordable, best institution that has like a good program in terms of like all those different aspects that make a good college experience of like, yeah, you're going to get uh, good involvement opportunities and internships and faculty interactions and all those things. And some of that is just going to be informed by like those qualitative uh, pieces where people can share that like, yeah, that was the case. It was really welcoming in, you know, great environment and I had all these opportunities or something. But um, so, yeah, it's the idea that's like just really uh, making it in like a time and space where you don't feel like you have to rush yourself. Like you can, you can take your time, uh, to, to build up that knowledge base and comparison shop and uh, read through things and uh, reach out to people and 
um yeah all that so i see i see it's really interesting i i just uh you know, I, I have two kids. Uh, one, it, one is just graduating from college. The other one just started her first first year in college. And so I just, I, I have experience kind of going through, uh, you know, college choice, a college selection process. And I hear uh, anecdotally from all of, a lot of their friends and how they go about making decisions about, uh, about the college, uh, about, you know, their college choices and everything. And um, yeah, I mean, so much of their decision making is instinctual, intuitive. It's like how their college visit went, um, you know, how the campus feels, you know, the speaker at the presentation and everything. And that's, you know, I think that's 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 fine. You know, you ultimately you have to be able to visualize you being able to attend a particular college. But yeah, I think um, there's, I would say, there isn't enough attention being paid to what af you know what happens afterwards you know what what there you know there's uh, tens of thousands of students that have you know gone through this path before me you know if i choose this particular school what happened to them what's what's their outcome like and so and and we're we're definitely de uh, delivering a lot of that type of data where and and that's going that is much becoming much more is easily accessible right and so for the, for students to do you know, just extra, a little bit of extra research um, and really take that into account in their overall decision making. You know, I don't think that's a, a big ask. And I think it will help kind of the bigger problem that we're facing, you know, this kind of growing gap between, you know, skills uh, needed for, you know, full employment and, you know, t you know and, and what, what people were trained, uh, you know, in college. And kind of, you know, this the fifty three percent underemployment uh, figures that we we're talking about, and that other piece too that we had mentioned about, you know, the prestige and name brand uh, kind of institutions and everything, because that would also be the rational thing. It's like, well, of course, I'm going to go there because it's just like, you know, best known. It's going to have a lot of transactional value and everything. But uh, you know, they're, they're obviously not the best in all regards, or like going to be the best fit for everyone. So. I'm just curious, like from your point of view, um, because this isn't necessarily something that we've talked a lot about with with others around college choice, but like that, like allure of the prestige and like your perceptions on that and how to maybe like push against that to allow at least people again to kind of just like look at other options and consider them versus just defaulting to just like, well, I've got to go to, you know, NYU because reasons, you know, just because like, right, um, right. curious on your point of view there. No, I think that's a great, uh, I think that's a great issue. I mean, I think. Uh, great point uh, that you bring. Um, I, I think, you know, in the old days, and there's a lot of, uh, you know, sort of the tradition is, oh, yeah, if you go to a prestigious school, you're set, right? That, that you know, if you if you go to Harvard or, you know, MIT, oh, you're, 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 you're totally set, uh, set for life, right? Um, that's definitely not true anymore. Um, and I will say unequivocally, the da what the data tells us is that what you major in is much more important than what uh, school you attend, right? So if like, you know, as, as a college student, uh, as a student, if you're kind of like sitting here, you know, grappling with decisions, like spend more time and energy focusing on what you're going to major in as opposed to, and what you're going to study as opposed to what uh, school you're going to go to, right? Um because that that makes a huge, much more, you know, there there's much greater sort of discrepancy and diversity uh, in uh, how people are financially compensated after college, depending on their major, and it, you know that discrepancy is just, uh, uh, you know, bifurcating even further than than it had been in the past, um, and, and so I think. Once people kind of realize that, you know, just because you went to Harvard, if you, you know, studied like, you know, film production, yeah, you're going to be in the same boat as everybody else, right? You know, you're, you're not going to make a lot of money and you'll struggle and maybe some, you know, a few of you will break break through and, uh, you know, hit it big. But just like, it's it's just a really, really tough, uh, tough major uh, to be rewarded financially. Uh, and same can be said a lot of other, for a lot of other majors. And so, you know, I think uh, just being, recognizing that there's uh, the the there is greater importance to that, that that one should put into what you study versus where you study, I think will help kind of allevi alleviate some of this sort of myth and some of this traditional like uh, inclination towards reputation because um, 
yeah, I mean, obviously you want to go to a school that uh, it get, gets recognized and, uh, and, and whatever, just because it makes you feel good. But, you know, it's like, it may not give you the, the life that you want. It may not give you the, the result that you want just because you went to that school. Um, and so being very thoughtful about uh, what, what, what you're, what you're, what you're going to study and what you're going to major in, I think is going to, you know, is, is important. It's going to take on greater importance as our economy becomes much more, uh, you know, diverse and very specialized and very deep and focused. And there's a lot of automation happening where, um, you know, a uh, lot more thoughtful decision making and critical sol- uh, problem solving is required early on in their careers. I would say that's going to be kind of the dynamic that plays out, you know, in terms of the disparity uh, in, in what uh, salaries people make out of college based on the major and, and the impact that has on sort of people's reliance on reputation. Right. Well, and I know too, like from my uh, upbringing through like my master's program studying uh, college and college student development, like adding on like yet another piece. It's like, it matters less where you go, uh, but what you study. And then like on top of that, like what you do while you're in college, like you can get really involved in network and build mentorships and uh, internships and all this stuff. Like you can maximize that time and really have amazing outcomes no matter where you go. Like those opportunities are really out there. And um, right, right. certainly also like if you're going to like a Harvard or any of these places, like, yeah, sure. Again, like there's a lot of like instant name recognition there, but you're often paying a pretty penny for it. Like you're paying a higher cost purely just for a sort of upmark of the brand and everything. So um, yeah, all again, and really important things to consider. And uh, again, if people are like doing their homework and that ultimately is what is the most important thing to them and they, you know, done a lot of searching and everything, then uh, that is also fine. But uh, just making sure people don't just default to that. Um, But I think, you know, a lot of what you said there, um, you know, centering on like kind of just what the economy is going to be looking at uh, moving towards the future. um, There's been really a big impact on people uh, engaging with more uh, short-term credentials and, uh, you know, allowing that for them to, uh, you know, engaging with that allows for them to Uh, pivot quicker, build kind of greater career resiliency and uh, just all these different kind of skills and everything. So I'm just curious, um, kind of in the mix with all of this, like, what do you think the impact of these short-term credentials uh, has been and kind of will continue to be? I I think it's a very, uh, a great direction that we're heading to kind of focus on some of these short-term credentialing. Um, You know, there are a lot of uh, coding boot camps and things like that that's out there. We have a product called SwitchUp that uh, we publish uh, reviews, student reviews of uh, uh, coding boot camp experiences. And the data also shows that coding boot camps are highly, uh, very, has, has a very high ROI in terms of placing students after they graduate into, uh, into a high paying job in that field that they studied in. And so I think that's a, a, a great uh, example of something that was done in recently that uh, that really changed to kind of the landscape of how people are training uh, for a long term career. Uh, that's uh, away from traditional colleges and universities. That's been very successful. Um, you know, we see also, you know, uh, the likes of Google and IBM and companies coming up with their own sort of credentialing sys- credentialing mechanism to to train people to, uh, you know, a, a, a different types of skill set. And quite frankly, a lot of these things, uh, you know, being a UX designer or product manager and things like that, you really can't get that kind of training in college just the colleges don't offer degrees like not enough colleges offer degrees in these fields that are so critical and so necessary for us uh you know for our economy to continue continue to grow um and so uh you know we're seeing these um institutions filling the gap and and i I think it's just fantastic um you know to be to be able to take uh you know to be able to take these highly, um, high, highly uh, educated, learnable, uh, you know, group of people and training them on a very spe- uh, specific skill set that's going to be highly relevant to the overall, you know, value creation process of our economy. Yeah, so I think I I I I think it's uh, it's it's a great direction, and I hope and I, I anticipate that will school continue to see more uh, of that being successful down the road. 
Yeah, definitely. I agree. Um, this is really good, affordable, flexible, kind of dynamic and responsive uh, educational options. And yeah, like you said, stuff, you know, through like Google and Amazon and uh, things like that, where they're like just saying like, we need people with these skills here, boot camp, like help train people with these. And, you know, uh, we'll be able to con- you know really consider them like their they're skills that, uh, yeah, are hard to come by otherwise. So yeah, so all really good stuff. So uh, as we wind down, um, I always love to ask any resources like books, podcasts, websites, anything um, that you would like to share, uh, you know, anything from uh, your own platforms or elsewhere uh, that we can include in the show notes. Uh, I'll shamelessly uh, promote our, our platform because I, I think we do have a great uh, resource uh, that's not uh, readily uh, accessible um, elsewhere out there and grad reports where we publish all the salaries for all the different majors um, and, and, you know, broken down by majors and colleges. And so, you know, if you want to go to, you know, NYU and want to, want to study uh, film production, you kind of, you can, you can see what you can expect to make out of, uh, out of, uh, you know, that experience and how that compares to other colleges and, uh, uh, other other film production majors in other colleges, and so that's a great way to compare and really and kind of think about um, you know the outcome uh, at, in, you know in terms of the major and college combination. Um, Switch up is also great uh, for uh, uh, figuring out uh, what are the great coding boot camps and um, ways to learn new skill set once you, uh, you know, when you have a very, very specific sense for uh, something that's very technology driven um, job that you're going after. Um, And so I think those are, you know, uh, you know, those are uh, two good uh, resources that for people to consider as they kind of think about their uh, choices and their decision making. So yeah, no, I, I, I absolutely, I, I, I absolutely endorse our platform to to everybody to you know to any any of uh, my friends and families uh, making decisions. Like I, I I always tell people, it's like, hey, you know that's fine. You know you can you can look at U.S. News and World Reports and see where the, where your school's ranking you know ranking at and 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 do all of that sort of um, you know reputation you know driven thing. But just make sure you 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 see what the outcome is going to be before you make the final decision. Well, uh, with that as well, we, you know, we always end with final thoughts, calls to action, um, anything that you'd like to wrap the episode with uh, on this topic. If I were to give advice, and and this is a slightly different, uh, you know, perhaps a little adjacent to kind of the specific topic that I, would, I was, that we were talking about, but I get asked a lot, uh, you know, what advice would you give to students? What advice get, would you give to like, uh, you know, uh, students, you know, making these, this decision and, make, you know, trying to figure this out? Um, and the, and and really kind of the advice that I would give that I think is more that that is pertinent is perhaps slightly different. The, the first order of advice that I would say is focus on what you're good at and try to figure out what you're good at and what you want to be good at, right? And and kind of let that be the guiding uh, principle for making a decision. Um, you know, I, I and 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 I guess sort of the, the along along with that, the advice that I give is like. Don't necessarily just follow your passion. Kind of be smart about like figuring out what you're good at, and then and then figure out how you can use that to you know be a, be of service to others and add value. Um, and and I think you know if you kind of take a longer longer broader approach to life, I think you know people will end up with a better outcome taking that sort of a high level approach. Uh, then really just trying to kind of figure out like how do I maximize and how do how do I just go and get the the best you know go to the, go to the most reputable college just so you can have that re- name recognition and be kind of you know myopic in that way. Yeah, great stuff. Well, I appreciate you sharing all that you did and uh, taking some time out and uh, into spending more time on this uh, relevant topic. So uh, we'll have ways to connect with you and the work that you're doing and all that we mentioned uh, in the show notes as usual. But uh, yeah, just thanks again so much. Well, thank you for having me. It's uh, uh, This was fun. I enjoyed it. Thanks for listening to this episode of the podcast. Make sure to rate, review, and subscribe so you never miss an episode. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you in the next episode of the Higher Ed Geek podcast.